An everyday situation. When driving a car, our brain must process a huge amount of information in an extremely short period of time, both important and unimportant information. Our attention filters out the important parts from this flood of impressions. If we are distracted and therefore miss important information, that could create serious consequences. Why our brain disregards and filters information, and how it processes visual stimuli. These are some of the questions tackled by scientists of the Cognitive Neurosciences Laboratory at the German Primate Center in Göttingen. Professor Stefan Troja is head of this research unit. The scientists know about the highly developed sensory abilities of the human visual system and want to find out how the attentional filtering process works. This filtering process is called selective attention. What we try to do here in the Cognitive Neuroscience Laboratory is understanding how that selection process works. So what are its consequences, what is the neural basis, and what happens if there is a malfunction in that system. Magnetic resonance tomography is one way of investigating attention processes in the brain. It enables us to see that external stimuli trigger changes in the brain, and also where these processes take place. Such imaging techniques do not show, however, how exactly the processing of sensory signals works. Conducting psychophysical experiments, Dr. Alexander Geil investigates motor behavior and reaction times in humans. The Göttingen scientists want to find out what kind of information we perceive prominently and how precisely and quickly we react to it. In order to enable our brain to treat information as important and relevant, it is of crucial importance, for example, how emergency switches and road signs are designed and where they are to be placed. Only then are we able to quickly and correctly act. Experiments are carried out to investigate this capacity in human volunteers. The scientists measure the movements of arms and eyes of the subjects with millisecond precision. With psychophysical experiments, we can test this performance in human subjects. Thereby, we get an insight into how the brain functions from the outside. Now, if we want to have a fully detailed understanding, we need to go inside, and that is what we need our monkey experiments for. About 1,500 animals live in the extensive DPZ enclosures, including baboons, lemurs, marmosets, and rhesus monkeys, as can be seen here. The DPZ breeds the animals for research groups all over Germany, and thus for the Cognitive Neurosciences Laboratory as well. This is where the PhD student Timo investigates the subject of attention. Weekday morning, Timo gets Sunny from the enclosure, which he shares with several other monkeys to train Sunny for a test. Sunny climbs into the monkey chair in order to bring him to the laboratory. The DPZ has strict hygiene regulations. Timo's laboratory clothing is meant to avoid the transmission of diseases to the monkeys and vice versa. In the laboratory, Sunny is placed in front of a computer screen and is provided with a push button. Objects are presented on the monitor. Sunny has learned that these target stimuli shall be there for exactly seven seconds. If this is the case, Sunny presses the push button for confirmation and is then rewarded with juice. Distracting stimuli attempt to distract him from this task. The training will show whether Sonny is able to maintain his attention on the target stimulus, despite the distracting stimuli and press the push button at the correct time. This is an example of the tasks that the Göttingen brain researchers teach their monkeys in an effort to understand the neural basis of attention processes. The most important scientific method for Professor Troja and his team is the recording of activities of individual neurons with microelectrodes. The most important method that we use here in the laboratory is the recording of the activity of individual neurons from the cortex of rhesus monkeys. We can visualize this. You can see here the impulses in yellow and green from a single neuron uh, in the cortex, and we can make them auditorily available through the crackling. So what you're hearing is the activity of a single neuron in response 
to various visual stimuli presented in front of the animal and under different attentional conditions. And this way we can see how the brain filters information depending on the attentional state of the animal. Dr. Bettina lange maletsky also deals with attention. In a cooperation project with the Göttingen University Hospital, the biologist is using EEGs to analyze the electrical activity in the brain of healthy children and of children suffering from the attention deficit ADHS. In the experiment, the child has to press the left or right mouse button, always in the direction of the middle arrow. The other two arrows are intended to divert the child's attention. Such tests contribute to the understanding of dysfunctions of attention processes. For this purpose, the scientists immediately evaluate the results of the EEG measurements. On the one hand, the way information processing works in the visual system is classical basic research. But nevertheless, the results that we get from our basic experiments have relevance, for example, for the medical and clinical applications because we have an understanding of how certain diseases might influence our ability to process information. And there's also a transfer into everyday situations. If we want to understand why in certain everyday situations we're able to filter relevant information and remove distracting information. Perception is a highly complex brain process. To ensure that important information is received, we have to better understand how our brain processes this information. The researchers of the Cognitive Neurosciences Laboratory in Göttingen are working on this.